Welcome back to the Bad Bitches Club over here. I have purple dye in my hair. I have fake tan on, dodgy fake tan on at that. I have red nail polish on to signify Bryce. And I have this graphic t-shirt to signify Danica. Today we are going to be having a book talk about Sergi Mass's new novel, House of Earth and Blood. First off, I would like to say that this book was a holy moly five stars for me. The emotions that it, it invoked in me, like it invoked so much emotions I did know I still had. I haven't experienced this amount of trauma since Akamov, and no one died. I don't think anyone died in Akamov, but, but people did die in this. So this is gonna be filled with spoilers. If you haven't read this book and you like Sergi Mass, I would recommend reading it. If you haven't read this book and you don't like Sergio Mass, please don't fucking read it because you're probably not going to like it if you don't like Sergio Mass. Honestly, um, I cannot tell you how much it upsets me of how many people criticize her. Constructive criticism is good. I'm just plain out, just being rude. It's just a bit like, why? So it's been two days since I read this beautiful, oh my god, the cover is literally gorgeous. And I broke the spine so many times, like wide. I could read everything, you know, read in between the lines and everything. I'm still having upsetting feelings about it because of the peak of the characters who died in this book. So obviously we should have known from the back of the book. Um, and then the demon murdered her closest friends. I don't really look at the back of the book anymore because I feel like it just spoils me for like everything. So I only looked at the top bit, and then when I was like 30 pages in, I read you know, the killing the friends part. And I was like, I got attached to Danica and the pack of wolves. I got really attached to Connor. Like for me, Bryce and Connor were gonna happen. Like I want them to happen still. You know, I love Hunt and all, but Connor and Bryce were the ones that I was like rooting for. And the text messages between them just absolutely broke me in half. Especially at the end. Oh my god, my emotions are so jumbled up. I'm gonna be everywhere. I was just so emotionally attached to these characters and they just died in such a horrendous way by Micah. This archangel asshole killed Danica and her pack of wolves and he, he even gave the drug. I think he gave the drug to Danica so to kill the pack of wolves or to kill herself which I thought was despicable just that that whole scene with Bryce um and Micah towards the end where Micah was like confessing that <laughs> he knew that Bryce was the horn which mind blown like what Bryce is the horn and she's starborn what I was like constantly what the fucking for the last 200 pages I kid you not that scene um was so tense and that everyone in the summit was watching along and giving in commentary was honestly I thought was perfect and uh, Micah threw Cyrix Sin into the nook washer with that weird ass creature and when Bryce went in to save him I was getting misty eyed a lot one of the first things I got misty eyed about was Lahibia I literally can't say her name but like the, the fire spirit, when she literally sacrificed herself for Bryce to have a couple of seconds to blow Micah's head off his goddamn shoulders and then chop him up and then light him on fire and then hoover his ass up. I thought that was honestly priceless when Bryce hoovered him up. And everyone was watching and I was like, this is my girl right here. She is, Bryce is just absolutely phenomenal character. But when she sacrificed herself and when Bryce was telling her that she was free and that Bryce paid for her, oh my God, that, that touched my heart. And then when, when Lahivia was saying that like, I'm a descendant of whoever and I'm protecting my friends and everyone, most people in the summit stood up for her. I almost started crying again because that touched me so much. The loyalty of these people, the friendships in this book were just absolutely astonishing and well written. God, I'm everywhere. Go oh, back to the pack of devils and Danica because I'm not over that. I will never be over that. I don't know if he spotted it, but like I felt like there was going to be a thing between Danica and Thorn. Is his name Thorn? Thorny? Um, I felt like there was going to be something there. And I was, I was like, look, I was hoping for their relationship to flourish. And then they all died. And that flourishing cannot happen because they're dead. I don't know why Sergi Maas made us love these characters more too throughout the book. When Danica helped uh, Bryce ascend, which that scene was absolutely phenomenal. Like that whole part of the book was, 
whoa, I literally, I was speechless. And when the other pack of the wolves were holding back, like the dead people, I think, I don't know what they were doing, but they were helping Danica be with Bryce. That made me tear up too because I just love the pack of wolves. I love Connor, I love Thorne, I love every Bronson, I love everyone. Like they deserved so much fucking more. And they would have they would have been amazing characters. That's one of the things that keeps making me crying. That these characters would have been amazing, phenomenal characters. And they just didn't have that chance to flourish. And it just makes me so sad. And another one when after all everything was done and Bryce went to next to the water and she was looking at the bone, the dead people, and she could see the pack waving at her. Okay, that made me cheer up again. Oh my god, these characters! I wish they were still in the book. The messages between Connor and Bryce. Last one that Connor sent two years ago saying like, text me when you get home safe. And then she texts him saying that she's home. Oh my god, I feel like crying right now. It's honestly ripped out my heart. Like it's so touching and oh my god, I feel like crying. I will not cry. I've cried so much already. The friendship between Danica and Bryce was just so, so immense. Such a strong bond between these two amazing kick-ass characters and I just wish Danica was alive because their friendship was just so 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 powerful and just the whole scene when Danica came in to help Bryce ascend and she said light it up. Two quotes that I love so much from this book is light it up, light it up Bryce, light it up Danica and another one is it was the quote on Danica's jacket, true love all is possible. I love them two quotes. I, I want light it up tattooed on my forehead and I want true love all is possible tattooed on both of my legs. I just think them quotes are so touching and they just mean so much like of Danica coming from the fucking dead, her essence, like helping Bryce ascend and then when Bryce <laughs> beat the Autumn King, her dad, her fucker of her dad, in power, I was like rejoicing. And then when Sabine, oh my god, Sabine, I did not like this character at all. She was just a bit of a nuisance, like I didn't understand her. Everyone was looking on astonished when she beat the king, um, you man, in power. Like that was a great moment. It was chapter 92 where it's like, oh, light it up, Diana Cat, light it up. It just hurt me so much and reading back over it, like my heart actually is in pain, like in physical pain. Another scene that was like absolutely a whopper. Bryce, the kick-ass female badass character was in the city. She was trying to get to the gates to close them up with her starborn power. Oh my god. And she kept a secret for Rune, her brother, which I love Rune to be honest. Him and Hypaxia. I think that's her name. Our, oh my god, I love them together. They are the best. To the scene where Hunt jumped out of the airplane to protect Bryce from the explosions that the Astria people were exploding into the city. And I was like, why are you doing this? When Hunt protected Bryce. And then when Bryce stood up and she was okay and she was like, wow, how am I okay? And then she looked over and saw Bryce's body. She looked over and saw Hunt's body. His legs were gone and his arm was gone. And that made me almost cry too. And then in my head, I was like, oh, it's grand. Like, didn't they say like they can heal? The bomb that the Astria bombed like slows Faye healing or something. So he would have died. But then Bryce ascended and she like saved him somehow. I don't know how she did that. After she ascended then and when Hunt was like, was giving her like chest compression CPR. And he was like, you're such a coward for not telling me those three words. Oh my God. True love, all is possible is all I gotta say. There's literally so much that happened in this book that's just flabbergasting me. I'm not gonna lie though, the beginning for me was really, was slow. First 200 pages were slow for me. Like I did a reading vlog and my last video, check that out. But the last 300 pages were mighty fine. Never felt this pain when I think of characters. Like when I think of Connor, of Thorn, of Danica, I feel pain. When I think of Lahivia, I just- Pain. World building for this was really good. And I really enjoyed, it was a fantasy set in modern times. Like I think that was such a cool aspect. I need to be Bryce. It did annoy me sometimes when she kept on saying alpha holes. And I think Sarah J Maas did that from her other books because she does use like alpha male characters and quite dominating male characters and some people probably didn't like that so Bryce then just hates that so Bryce is just totally against all of them she's like fuck everyone who's trying to protect me who's a male I just loved her personality her witty personality her smart ass comments 
was just a bit of me. I just, I just absolutely love that. So let's talk about Hunt. Hunt Attler, um, the guy with the helmet who kills everyone. I absolutely loved how Hunt and Bryce came together because they both went through really hard ordeals. The scene where um, Hunt came back from killing the people and he was in the shower and Bryce came in and like washed him and clothed him was honestly that was such a fantastic scene and such a well-written scene i don't know when it was but when hunt was like um he was like asking bryce if she's her she's his friend and she's like yeah every <laughs> wait we need to talk about the uh, unicorn toy thing that hunt found honestly that scene was priceless like when he found that <laughs> and then he went to bryce and he thought <laughs> It was like a vibrator that honestly killed me and then when Bryce said from the question that Hunt asked her like are we friends and Bryce was like ever since you thought like my jubilee thing my bobber was like a dildo we've been friends since then like honest to god yes I've been hearing a lot that people don't think Hunt and Bryce are endgame and that people think that Bryce and Adidas, Adi Adidas. Okay, I'm gonna call him Adidas, but he's the prince of the chasm. He's the cat. But they think Ad Adidas and Bryce are endgame, which I don't. You know, that's not the way. I don't like that. Get away from me. Also, I really hope Declan and Flynn find people because I love them. They're just so funny, humorous characters. I just love them. I don't want any more characters to die. Any guy who's sarcastic and witty is the best. The relationship between Arun and Bryce was a really really interesting relationship because they were such on good terms because they are so alike. Just how their relationship went from being such like a damaged thing to being like trusting like they like each other at the end which is great. We love a sister and brother relationship that's good. Um, why did I just do that? I kind of saw myself a little bit in their relationship. Not in the bad parts because me and my brother are like have always been good but just in the banter that they have like me and my brother always have banter like we literally cannot have a straight conversation without having like some smart ass thing to say about each other like it's i just love that type of relationship with a brother or sister relationship it's just the best okay let's talk about the obvious here and that we didn't get a sex scene sarah Jamas is such a tease <laughs> no i actually quite liked it because um like we got a few things you know that keeps us on the edge it keeps us waiting and i quite like that because in every other single book we always get it we always get it like instantly too so i quite like that she like held out like go on sarah you dirty dog sarah i don't know what else to talk about because i didn't annotate any of the book which i'm glad i didn't because annotating for me always is a bit rough sometimes so I'm glad I didn't annotate, but I'm also not glad I didn't annotate because I don't know what to talk about. Oh my god, Victoria. <laughs> She's in the water. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, hopefully in the next book, they get Victoria back and she's not like insane from being in the water. Oh, she's okay. Just cannot wait for the next book. It's going to be phenomenal. It's coming out in 20 November, I think, next year. Which, boy, why can't you come out quicker, honestly? So give me your thoughts, give me your, me your opinions down in the comment section. Let's have a discussion. And also, I'm still not okay. I keep, like, I'm not gonna lie. Yesterday, the day after I read the book, I kept on crying. Like, I was just kept on crying because I have, I printed out pictures of some of the characters and some of the quotes and put it on my wall. I kept on crying. Like I keep on crying about Danica and the pack of wolves. That's the main thing that's really, really hurting me whenever I think about this book. And the quote, Light It Up, is hurting me all the time. And the quote, um, Through Love All Is Possible, is hurting me all the time. I love Sergio Mass. A star for me. You know, if this was, if I was a lecturer and this was a novel she gave up to me and I had to correct it, Okay, I wouldn't even give it a mark. I would just inst instantly publish this book. Without her consent even, I'd be like, okay, calm down. I need to publish this ASAP. Honestly, I think it's one of my favorites. That was the video. Peace. Oh my god, it's 32 minutes.